Ladies and gentlemen, baseball is back in Toronto. This afternoon, the Blue Jays will take on the Rays to kick off opening day. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. All right, the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Carter, today is the day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Uh, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button because the season is kicking off. We are going to be covering Blue Jays every single day on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts, mm -hmm. as well as Twitter, Braden Five Wasco, Carter First Two. And we're going to be posting as well on our TikTok and Instagram page. You'll see some reels, some TikToks, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Shorts on YouTube, why not throw that in there? And that is at Locked on Blue Jays. Today is the day. Baseball's back. I've, I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to tell you my excitement level right now because all I want to see is that first pitch being thrown and, and well, ideally a Blue Jays win. But just the fact that baseball's back, I'm just thrilled. I'm just happy. I haven't, I, I, you know, I haven't felt this in like a year, so I'm just ready to go. Fine. It's about time that we get meaningful baseball. Gone are the days that we're just dwelling for just any baseball to come back. Gone are the days where we're seeing people we don't even know on the Toronto Blue Jays. It's time to shine. Today's the day. I'm so excited for it. I'm hoping for a quick and easy Blue Jays win, but we all know that's not going to happen. It's probably going to be, if we end up squeaking out a win, it's probably going to be like 9-8 or something with the Blue Jays history on opening day. But I'm fired up. We got a division opponent in the Rays. It's going to be a good game, great series, a four-gamer to start. I'm excited for it. Yeah, and, and it is interesting. I mean, obviously, we've had the conversation about Jose Barrios getting the start opening day. Uh, it's sort of a comebacker for him. You know, he wants to have a good performance because a few years ago, he got the start opening day. And really, it sort of started him on a downward trajectory that season. Of course, he had last year and bounced back and has been amazing ever since. But it's going to be interesting to see his uh, his attitude on the mound going into opening day, and you know if that if the nerves get to him at all. Yeah, he's got a uh, he's got some people to prove wrong. I believe come twenty twenty two, obviously we all remember that a terrible performance, only getting one out in that opening day start. But Jose Brios, since twenty twenty two, he has been unbelievable. He's done it in spring training. He's a guy that I'm very confident in starting against the Tampa Bay Rays. He's going to give you the length. He's going to give you a quality start. It all depends if the Blue Jays hitters can get to Zach Eflin and actually score some runs on this race team because the Rays always have a good bullpen. Zach Eflin is a good starter. I mean, they don't have Shane McClanahan. Drew Rasmussen's out as well. So we do kind of get lucky with the starting pitching that we are facing on the Tampa Bay Rays. But Zach Eflin is definitely nothing to laugh about, nothing to joke about. Still a great pitcher. Two dogs going out on an opening day. What more could you want? Yeah, no, I'm pumped. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm, I was looking up the game, and of course, it's opening day, so I will have some bets being placed uh, today. So I wanted to go over some of the lines that are set right now, just to sort of uh, keep in the back of your head of what these guys are going to hit. Strikeouts for uh, Barrios are set at five and a half is the over-under. Uh, I'm probably hammering that. I think he's going to get six or seven. Um, so I'm taking that. Earned runs allowed is set at two and a half for Barrios. Um, that's an, that's an interesting one. I think that's tough. I, I would love to take the under, but I'm probably going to stay away from that just because that's a tough line. Uh, and the total walks allowed over or the over unders one and a half for him as well. So I think that's a pretty aggressive, uh, like walk over under. Uh, but you know what? It's opening day. I'm probably just going to ride it because I want to see the Jays do well, uh, for Zach Eflin, the strikeouts, uh, is at set at four and a half. The earned runs allowed are set at one and a half, which I found a little bit interesting. Wow. I thought, you know, with the Jays hitting looking like they do in spring training, I thought, okay, they're, you know, they're probably going to try to start early and start uh, hot. So, you know, putting up some runs on the starter probably is what they're going out there to look to do. Uh, and the total walks allowed is set at 0. 0.5, which I think is a little bit insane for a walk total for opening day. But, uh, you know, so I'm probably going to hammer the over on that as well. Uh, the rest of them, you know, I haven't done a total, total deep dive into all the rest of the bets allowed. But you know what? I'm just getting fired up for this season. And, you know, it's it's sort of fun. We're going to be having, of course, our stream uh, start right after the game to go over all of our reactions and, and what we think from the game. And, of course, then we'll have, you know, 
uh, the, the the basic Friday episode out going over recapping the game, any any big situations that is, that arise from the game on Thursday, but uh, or today, but but you know what, Carter, uh, I'm just pumped. Do you have any like any what, what's if, what's your going to be your like biggest look for in today's game? I think it's going to be it's the starter versus starter battle, and we've seen it in the history of opening day. Pitchers usually take a little bit longer to settle in and find their stride in the regular season. Obviously, they've only had one or two starts to build up. They've really only had one start that they've thrown five plus innings. So that's why I find it very surprising. They have especially uh, Eflin's line for walks at 0.5. You don't think at least at one time in the game, he's going to kind of lose control a little bit on opening day for a guy that's not used to starting. He's never started opening day in his career. So it's going to be interesting from that. I'm really cool. But I think with everyone else, I think we're really just going to be watching the bats in this lineup. We want offensive production. We want it early, and we want a lot of it. We didn't get any of it last season. I mean, other than opening day, we did have a decent opening day last season. But unfortunately, one game cannot describe the entire season. So I think the two things that I – or three things I'm going to be looking at is the starting pitching battle, the Blue Jays bats that should be coming back, the guys like Dalton Varsho, we've been talking about all offseason, Alejandro Kirk, Vladdy, all those guys. Hopefully they can get it back at the plate. And then the thing that I'm going to try not to do, but I know it's going to happen, is overreact about game one. If Vladdy does go 0 for 4, hopefully it doesn't happen. We can't just get on him and be like, this guy's a bomb. It's a bust. Not the superstar we want. It's one game. We got to just let these guys ride it out for at least a little bit. Give them some credit and just cheer our Blue Jays boys on. Okay, I want to set an over-under line on uh, couch slaps that Carter does uh, opening day. Carter's notorious for when things aren't going his way. He gives the couch like like four continuous smacks to get out his rage. Um, so I'm going to say that, that I hope that doesn't have to happen at all. But knowing Carter, that'll happen like 46 times. Um, I do have the stats on the betting lines for tomorrow's game. The Blue Jays... Um, aren't the favorites shockingly um the line set at uh, 215 and the rays at 174 the over under seven and a half total runs in the game uh the blue jays are plus 1.5 as well so you know decide with that what you will um you know i'm betting the jays hardcore because why would i ever bet on the jays to lose a game uh but yeah it should be fun and and i think my biggest takeaway is i think you hit the nail on the head with uh the not overreacting. And I think that's going to be tough. Uh, I know you're probably going to be on TikTok losing your mind or on the post game show that we're going to do and, and losing your mind if it doesn't go our way. But uh, the, the not overreacting is a big part. I think just, in, just try to enjoy the game, enjoy the outing, you know, have a couple uh, beverages probably, you know, thank goodness I get Friday off. So I get to fully enjoy the start of baseball here. Um, and yeah, it just should be fun. I, I think, the bar show thing is is a something strong that I'll be looking for. I'm not sure um, as well, probably Kirk. Uh, and then honestly, to see how the guys do in the outfield as well, to see if they can keep up sort of the same structure that they had last year, you know, making plays and, and not allowing much by them. And then they were great for that. So I, I want to see that continue. So that's probably one of my keys that I'm looking for into this game. Yeah, and one thing I have found interesting about just this AL East in totality is that at the start of this uh, spring training, I saw the Blue Jays. They were normally kind of seated at the two position in the division. The Yankees and the Orioles usually flip. Now I'm seeing a lot of people writing off the Blue Jays completely, having them fourth. Some even have them fifth in the division. I don't know how that is. They have them not making the playoffs, which can be debated, I guess. But there's no way the Jays are going to be finishing less than fourth or worse than fourth in this division. Fourth would be a very bad year for me. That would not be a successful year at all. We'd probably see some uh, management changes. Ross Atkins might kind of be on the hot seat this season based off his lack of playoff success. And one thing about the uh, the couch slaps that you're getting into, you got to give it every single time the Jays strike out, that's a couch slap, 100%. Uh, if they miss a minimum of a fastball, hopefully it's not as much of this this year with Matt Chapman being gone. And then just if the Rays hit a home run, that those are automatics. And then other than that, it kind of goes wild. I could be like our roommates and put holes in the walls, but I decided to be lenient with our apartment <laughs> and slap the couch because it is loud and it's funny because I get reactions out of it. Yeah, no, no. I mean, it's it's harmless for sure. Um, and, and we we have fun, you know, maybe we'll, you know, uh, it, it's going to be just, it's. I think the whole atmosphere of being back in the season, I know last year, I mean, you would sit on the couch and just watch games. Me, you, and our roommate, Justin, we'd sit there and watch games. I think tomorrow is going to be awesome. 
just for the fact of being able to sit on the couch. You know, it's it's obviously not the nicest temperatures out here in Winnipeg right now, but at least we get the the illusion of nice and baseball season being here. Um, so yeah, it's it's honestly just when opening day rolls around, um, it just puts me back in like the summer mindset. You know, baseball, golf, uh, watching the Blue Jays probably too much, staring at a screen probably too much when it's nice outside, but I'm still glued to the TV. Um, it's just it's a great time of year. I'm I'm so excited. I, I honestly, I don't know where to go. I just, I just sort of want to be watching the game right now. And I like, we, we we're talking about it. We've been, me and you've been grinding MLB, uh, the show the past couple of days. I think we're both at the point now where we just want to see, uh, some blue Jays regular season baseball. Yeah. We've been waiting all, all winter, all of spring training for meaning, meaningful Toronto blue Jays baseball. And I'm excited for opening day. Other than one thing I did want to get into, this might be a hot take but I'm completely out on how long the opening lineup like ceremonies take. Oh, I feel yeah. like it's 45 minutes. I'm already so excited to watch the Toronto Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess it, it is nice to give some of the like equipment managers, the staff, the Toronto Blue Jays, the Blue Jays have some light and some respect because they do work hard and all that, and I do respect what they do. But I'm, I'm out on that. I don't want to sit there for 45 minutes when the game's supposed to start our time, 10 after 3. It's probably going to end up starting at 3.45 at oh. best. As okay, Blue that's Jays what podcasters, I was... there, sorry, I'm just going to finish. And Blue Jays podcasters, we already know all the guys on the team. Maybe it's more for the casual fans and stuff like that, but I'm completely out on that. I just want to see Blue Jays baseball, and I want it now. Okay, I was going to ask you. So in this scenario, it says opening pitch is 310, but you think that they're not going to do all this beforehand? It's going to, like, bleed into the time of the, the supposed time of first pitch? They always try to do it beforehand, and it never works out. They never give them enough time. It always goes way over. You got all the announcements, both teams usually. And especially that's at the Rays, they're going to – I feel like they're really going to drag it out at the trop. I'm not excited for it. I'm going to probably turn it on, and then if they're doing the opening day ceremonies, I might just mute the TV. Maybe I'll go play some MLB while I'm waiting. (laughs) Good old Tropicana feel sitting in the stands there. Fantastic. Uh, Actually, it's funny. I went there a few years ago. And uh, wow, what a, you know, it had the, it has the potential. It's, it's, I mean, it's obviously an older stadium. It's, it's not the, the nicest place in the world. Um, it is cool in that sense, but it's also like, okay, this is a, this is not a major league ballpark, especially when you compare it to a stadium like Toronto, right? Where it's beautiful and they keep doing renovations and, and trying to make it a better experience for the fans. It is shockingly bad in comparison so uh if any Rays fans ever want to say anything i just always point them back uh to the ballpark and say hey well ballpark's terrible team's terrible let's move on i don't know the tropicana is kind of the blue jays hell it seems like they have yes. the worst success of all time in the trop hopefully they can beat uh, the allegations on that and overcome the demons they have at the tro- at tropicana it's going to be a tough series. They're, these lineups stack up pretty well. I think we do have uh, the upper hand on the starting rotation, especially. But when you break down these lineups, especially when uh, you're comparing like guys, Randy Rose Arena to George Springer, there's so many players that, especially on the Rays, that are very underrated, can hit for power, can have great years. So I do want to get into some lineup comparisons and who the Blue Jays are going to field for their opening day start. We're going to get into that right after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. As you guys know, I love purchasing my tickets with Game Time. They get me the best deals. I can see the view from my seat before I purchase the tickets, which I think is a huge upside because then I know, okay, is there anything in my way? Is the glass going to be, am I too close to the glass as I was in, a, in the NHL game, which I probably won't do again. I'll probably sit a little bit higher up in the 200s. Um and it, it's just they make it so much easier for you purchasing tickets. And, and they give you great deals, which is just above and beyond. It's awesome. Um, say You can save up to 60% off buying last-minute sports, concerts, comedy, theater. Uh, they have flash deals as well, which is crazy. I didn't even know that was a thing because, like, when I first started using Game Time, it was sort of like uh, – we need tickets and this is the only way to get tickets at this point uh, because Ticketmaster just was not selling. So they, they're fantastic. They also have all in pricing. Uh, so you can toggle this feature shows you a total upfront. So there's no surprise fees when you go to checkout, no handling fees, anything like that. And of course they have the lowest price guarantee. 
They also have game time, their ticket coverage as well. So your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry, which is really good too. If you have any issues, they help you immediately. It's fantastic. So you can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time for a limited time. All users can get two, $20 off MLB purchase of 150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch terms apply. That's code F I R S T P I T C H for $20 off from March 25th to April 14th only download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So of course, uh, again, we're back opening day today. We will be live on YouTube uh, right after the final pitch. Uh, you know, we'll go over all the games, our reactions, our immediate thoughts. Um, but I figured me and Carter were sort of talking like, hey, you know what? Let's let's give sort of a lineup outlook here a little bit um, just because it is opening day and, and why not? Um, so sort of something weird coming out of John Schneider. We've had this debate on this podcast a few times. Vlad Guerrero Jr. batting second ahead of Bo Bichette, flipping them from last season behind George Springer. Justin Turner will bat fourth. Coming straight from John Schneider in a tweet. Thanks from uh, Shai Davidi as well. Um, so we pretty much knew that. Then we know Varsho will be in the lineup. Um, obviously, uh, Kirk will be there. Uh, probably Kirk, I'm guessing, is going to be hitting five or six, depending on where they, what they do with Varsho. No official lineup yet. But, I mean, it's pretty obvious. Um, and then Eflin being a right-hander, obviously Biggio is going to be in there. So he's probably going to hit, um, be hitting and then start at second base with IKF starting at third, like we've sort of predicted, even though, you know, to our dismay a little bit. But he'll be starting at third, Biggio at two. Um, and, and then obviously we'll have Kiermaier and, and Springer leading off the lineup. Um, so it, it we're looking good in the Jays sort of, bats i think i think i'm pretty happy with how things have played out and where guys will be the the vlad bow thing really sort of doesn't sit right with me but we'll see what happens right this is opening day there's a ton of games to be played where they have a lot of time to figure this out uh something interesting coming out of the jays bullpen nate pearson and wes parsons uh will open the season on the blue jays roster since jordan romano and eric swanson are headed for the il no immediate timeline on that, but, uh, you know, we don't think it's going to be an extended stint on the IL. Um, obviously Kevin Gosman is going to be out as well. Um, they are debating right now per Shai Davidi, a Sunday possible start for Kevin Gosman, but this, the option is still there for the Monday start for him as well. Um, so most likely, as we know, we'll, I'll give you a quick rundown. We won't break down any of the other games today, but it will be Barrios, Bassett, and then Kikuchi as well. So Ke Kevin Gosman, look for him to start in that fourth slot, uh, the fourth game of this race series. Uh, as well, uh, just some other news. Alec Manoa is likely, obviously, starting the season on IL. Uh, he threw 34 pitches over two innings in a sim game. Uh, that was uh, yesterday, actually. Um and I think the next steps from him will just be sort of see how he feels moving forward. Like we've sort of talked about with Alec Manoa, we're not sure where this season's going to be headed for him. What his, you know, if this injury is a little bit of a, I don't want to say phantom injury, but a little bit of a phantom injury where he just needs to get his confidence up, figure out some more stuff. That is a possibility as well. Um, Carter, looking at the Jays lineup compared to the Rays lineup, who are the Rays bringing out to face this Toronto Blue Jays team? Yeah, the Rays always do have a sneaky lineup. I want to start by saying, I don't know how Junior Caminero is not in the lineup. When he came up last season, I believe it was around August, he made a bunch of starts against the Toronto Blue Jays, and he absolutely raked. This guy can smoke the baseball. Maybe they're trying to manipulate his service time a little bit, but he was already up for a bit last year. I'm not a big service time guy. I'm not 100% sure how that stuff works. I just kind of see what the players actually do on the field. They can uh, handle the analytics with the, uh, the Blue Jays analytics team that hopefully they do go away from at some points in the season because you can't always rely all on analytics. Then just looking at this lineup, they have Yandy Diaz, great year last year, caused the Blue Jays a lot of havoc. havoc. Brandon Lowe's there. Randy Rosarena, Isaac Grittis, um, Harold Ramirez, Amat Rosario. There's a lot of guys on this lineup that are pretty good. They have a fairly deep lineup. I would say the top six are pretty good in comparison 
to the Toronto Blue Jays. It's very similar with these lineups. And that's why I think it's going to be a battle. I do think we have the advantage on our starting pitching. But as our bullpen is fairly depleted, you're going to have to rely on Trevor Richards a little bit more. The other ones I'm not too worried about, you got Tim Meza, you got Chad Green, you got Yimmy Garcia. These guys have been doing it for a while. They will be okay with Jordan Romano and Eric Swanson not being in the game. But I think this is going to be a tight series. It's going to come down to who can hit, uh, who can make a clutch play at the right moment, who can get a clutch hit at the right moment. When you look at it from the broad perspective, the Blue Jays aren't very good in clutch situations going back to last season. Hopefully they can switch that up this year, but I think this is going to be a dog fight to start the season. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree with you. I think any anytime the Blue Jays play another uh, AL East team, it's going to be a tough battle. We've seen they're not very great against AL East teams in the past. So if they can get out to a hot start against these Rays, uh, like I was talking about, of, of trying to get on the starter early, I think that's a huge component in all of these games for the Blue Jays. If I had like a key to the game, I'd say that is my key to this game is is get the bats rolling quickly, get on the start early. I know that's easier said than done, um, but for these players, that's what they got to do. I think I think you 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 got to be ready to hit up there. And uh, I know I know we don't you know this team doesn't shy away from swinging the bat. Maybe it pitches even they shouldn't, but uh, but I I don't mind. I don't mind them you know trying to to start a sort of a rally early here. Um, it's, it's very, it's going to be so much fun. I'm, I'm so ready. I, I think the, you know, we talked about last episode, just the, the clutch moments. And I feel like a lot of the time when it's AL East teams facing each other, it's a great opportunity for clutch moments. And I think throughout this whole season, we will have to see more production in clutch moments from this Blue Jays lineup and not just from Bo Bichette, right? We, he needs some help out there. Um, so yeah, another another big key to the game, I think. Just just be ready, be ready to hit. Come in there like with a good mindset and a competitive mindset. Like we've talked about a lot is is the want to win, the want to perform in front of your fans. I think is a huge thing for this team. Uh, and yeah, we'll we'll sort of see what happens opening day. Yeah, the Blue Jays, uh, like I've said, do lack the clutch ability. And I think the reasoning for this uh, prediction here is I think that the Blue Jays, especially in this series, they really need quality starts when they're starting pitching. We Our bullpen's already taxed with injuries. I don't want it to be down the stretch in the first week, and we have to rely on guys like Wes Parsons and Nate Pearson early against a Rays lineup that can do damage. We need Jose Brios to go six innings. We need Chris Bassett to go at least five. We don't want to use up Chad Green, Tim Meza, all these guys too early. And then it comes to the eighth inning and we're stuck with Wes Parsons or Mitch White throwing in a high leverage situation. when that's not exactly what we need for an opening day series. So I think that if the Blue Jays pitchers can give us length, if Jose Brios, like he has been all spring training, like he was all of last season, can give us some length. I think that's going to be a huge advantage for the Blue Jays coming up. And in turn, we need to get to the starting pitching. Zach Lytle is really good, obviously. But other than that, like they do have some flaws in their starting rotation. Obviously, we did get lucky, I guess you could say, with for lack of a better word, with injuries. Uh, Shane McClanahan and Drew Rasmussen. This lineup could be really disgusting. And then if you look at Wander Franco, if he wasn't a horrible person, he is an unbelievable baseball player. So in that sense, again, for back of a better ter- lack of a better term, we do get lucky in that sense. But Wander Franco did it to himself. There's no sympathy there. And I'm, I'm just excited to get into baseball. There's not much more I have to say. Let's just get a Blue Jays win and start yeah. off early. Yeah. And you know what? You have actually, in this break here quickly, you have some prize picks, I guess, picks um, for today's game. And as well, it's sort of an interesting story. We, we sort of had a little bit of, uh, of chaos, I want to say, today uh, in the sense that with, with my early shift coming home. Uh, and then, and then we'll sort of get into it. But a story that something crazy sort of happened to you today, um, and and I think this might be an overarching problem around your whole university. So we want to talk about that, just in the sense of this is sort of a nuts, out of the wall story um, that happened today. So we'll get into Carter's picks, and then that coming up. So today's episode sponsor is Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 like I'm going to be trying to do today. So when I was going around with my prize picks bets, I've been obviously going with the NHL recently. And I was about to do that today as well. Even though we've been talking about the Blue Jays this entire time, I'm like, I was just still thinking that I have to make NHL bets. I'm like, holy, I can actually bet on the MLB. I can play some fantasy bets, see what I have going here. So I'm excited for this. So what I have today 
is I, I did have one NHL bet because we are in our fantasy league and I still wanted to pay some homage to my boys that are battling for me. So I do have Alex talk with over 0.5 points. I know he has an assist. So that one hit then. So that was today. Sorry, but this is for tomorrow. You Darvish. I have, he's going to give up more than 4.5 hits against San Francisco. Matt Chapman's going to do some damage in that lineup that he did not do for the Toronto Blue Jays. I have Kevin Biggio. They gave him a 0.5 base total. I'm hammering that over. I know Kevin, like, Walks don't count for total bases, but I'm still hammering the over. Kevin Bishop's looked pretty good so far in spring training. I think he's going to bloop one out there at minimum. He's been making good contact. Dalton Varsho, I don't like to bet against the Toronto Blue Jays. They have his total bases line set at 2.5. I think that's very high for a lot of players in the MLB, especially opening day. I'm assuming they just have him hitting a home run maybe. Like, I'm not sure what that is. But uh, I have Dalton Varsho less, unfortunately, for the 2.5 bases. And then Zach Allen, I have 4.5 hits, and that's less against the Colorado Rockies. They're not playing in Colorado, so that's going to help them out a ton. Zach Allen, one of the best pitchers in the NL. And that Rockies lineup does not look too good. So if you want to ride with me or just make your own uh, fantasy picks on prize picks, you can download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for first deposit matchup to $100. It's code LOCKEDONMLB for first deposit matchup to $100. So, of course, uh, it is opening day today. We are doing a stream right after the final pitch of the game. I'm going to be hammering that just because, you know, it's coming up. We, you know, we haven't done a live stream before. We want all of you guys to tune in. Give us your thoughts, opinions after the game. We'll react to, to your guys' opinions. You guys can react to our opinions and our uh, emotion, I guess, after the game. Um, and, and usually we like to keep it pretty baseball-centric here. Um, but a crazy day in the world of us, and I know some of you guys – watch this uh, podcast or listen to this podcast just for Blue Jays and don't care, you know, what goes on in our lives. But when crazy things happen to us, it's sometimes easier to get on here and, and discuss because it's, it's like an outlet of, uh, of sort of craziness. I know when we were robbed, we had a, a couple, like twice actually in two days, we did an episode all on that, uh, you know, locked on Blue Jays one, um, you know, crackhead zero, um, but uh, Carter had something insane happen to him today, uh, sort of over this past week, I guess, um, and just sort of told me about it. And then I've I've read uh, some posts from other people here going through the same thing. So, Carter, I'm going to throw it to you. Let us in on what this crazy story. Yeah, so this kind of starts on Monday. And I would, I'm just going to be honest on this podcast. I had a morning class. I didn't go because I was playing MLB on Sunday night. So I missed that <laughs> first class. The second class, my professor was sick. So that's whatever. I did go to my night class, but for some reason, she said that you couldn't access. It's called Nexus, which is like her online page for our university. So she said she couldn't access that, but she had her slide saved or whatever. So that happened on Monday. She couldn't access the internet, couldn't access our like university homepage. On Tuesday, the same thing happened. I'm like, maybe this is just like a, a glitch or something. And then Tuesday night, they come up with an email saying there was a cyber attack on the University of Winnipeg. So there's some good things and some bad things about this. Good things is there's a Blue Jays game tomorrow and I can't do any homework even if I wanted to. So now my day is fully ready to go for the Toronto Blue Jays. I probably can't do anything Friday either. I think this is going to last the full week. That might be a little bit dangerous for me. The opposing end of this is that school is probably going to go longer into the summer, which is kind of crappy for me. Uh, obviously, it, in here in Winnipeg, it has snowed recently, but we were hoping that golf season could start early and I wanted to hammer that. But yeah, so I guess... Uh, Thanks, and also screw you, the cyber attacker, because you gave me some time off to watch the Blue Jays. But now this might hurt me in the long run, so we'll have to see what happens here. Yeah, and I mean, uh, obviously, uh, with the game going on tomorrow, you know, you like to get into the beers once in a while. I don't mind grabbing a couple. Uh, so I don't work Friday. I do the I do the uh, I'm doing the sp morning sports tomorrow on uh, a radio station here in Winnipeg. Um, so I have the 5 a.m. shift until one shift. So I get home perfectly in time to throw on the, you know, maybe throw a pizza in the oven and get ready for the Blue Jays game. Um, and yeah, it, you know what? It, this sucks. I'm sorry to all of the your classmates and, and yourself that are going through this. But also being able to, you know, have a couple beers and, and a, you know, just chill out and watch the Jays game. It couldn't. It's. I think the Jays might have planned this just to give their fans off the opportunity to watch some opening day baseball. Yeah, it worked out perfectly. Obviously, opening day is one of the most touted days for me in the MLB season. 
obviously you got the playoffs, stuff like that. When it comes down to the playoff stretch, it's obviously fun. But when you haven't had meaningful baseball in like eight months and you finally get Blue Jays baseball back, it just fires me up. Usually we do go all out with some snacks. Like we get wings, mozza sticks. I think we had last year, a bunch of different things. Toronto Blue Jays baseball, you got to go out all out. And I'm excited for it. Yeah, me too. We're, uh, we might have to make like a quick, uh, when I get back from work tomorrow, we might have to make a quick like uh, grocery store run to go get some food. Because I don't know if I'll be in the uh, in the mood to make anything necessarily when I'm dialed right into Blue Jays baseball. Um, but yeah, you gonna you know what, guys? This is gonna be just a great couple days into the weekend of baseball. Uh, we will be live on YouTube, like I said, right after the last pitch. Also, um, we'll be you know throwing updates on our Twitters, Braden Five Oscar Carter first two. And if anything crazy happens, you know that me and Carter will be making our TikTok slash reels slash shorts slash whatever, whatever else yeah. they want to call them. Um, because we we like to have fun, and I know uh, I poked fun at uh, Garrett Cole when uh, Danny Burgers hit a home run off of him. Um, so we're gonna try to keep up to date with all of that stuff, keep you guys in the loop. We want to be your hub for Blue Jays information as much as we can. So. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And uh, before we go, Carter, uh, I, I think people should be tuning into this streaming chat service because if you're a fan of any other team as well, it's a perfect place to tune into all of Locked On's content. Yeah, I got three things to say before we head out for today's episode. The first one is our 24-7 streaming channel. There's so much sport, so many sports going on right now, but MLB's back. I'm so fired up. It's a perfect time to be a sports fan. March Madness, you got the NHL playoffs coming down to the wire. NBA playoffs are going on as well. The MLB is finally here, as we've been talking about on this podcast. So, so many good opportunities to check out our experts on the Locked On Sports Day channel. Just go over to YouTube and subscribe to that. So, the next two questions are for just kind of both of us, Braden. The first one is, we need a launch call. Who on the Blue Jays is launching tomorrow? I'm going opening day, Vlad Guerrero Jr. Book it, write it in, put your bets in. Ladies and gentlemen, Vladdy hits his first bomb of the season opening day. Does he do it in the first inning? Probably not, no. That would be so electric. I Man, the couch slap. Well, we got to set a couch slap over under two. That's another thing that I wasn't going to add into this. But if Vladdy hits a home run in his first A-B, the over, it's hitting. There's going to be 47 in that first A-B. The second one, we'll do the couch slaps at the end. The second one is just the Blue Jays score prediction for opening day. It's going to be tough to predict because it's kind of all over the map with the Blue Jays history. We do have a good history of winning the last four years or 4-0. But, Braden, what's your score prediction just for the opening day? 7-4 Blue Jays. Got to hammer the Blue Jays. I'm going to go 5-3 Blue Jays. I'm not seeing as much offense. But Jose Brios, quality start. We're going to get to Zach Vidal fairly quickly. And for the couch laps, I don't even know where to start for this. It depends how the Jays game goes. If it's a boring game, there won't be much. If the Jays are getting smacked, there'll be a lot. If the Jays are winning, there probably won't be as much. But there'll be a few when we get going there. I'm going to guess I'll set it at like 46 and a half. I don't know. Jesus, I was going to set it at like 18 and a half. Okay, we can go 18 and a half. And I don't even know how we're going to keep track of this anyway. I think I'm going to get too involved in the game anyway. But. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, if there's, we'll say a lot or not a lot. How about that? I'm going to go with a lot. I'm going to go with a lot as well because I'm so fired up for this. I know the fans are as well. Thank you guys for watching as always. We always appreciate all the comments, the likes, the subscriptions. We saw that about 80% of you guys now are not subscribed. It has gone down since we've been uh, kind of hammering that into you guys, which is awesome. We love it so much, all the support. If you guys are watching these videos anyway, coming back, we always appreciate it. You might as well drop a subscription. It is free. And all the comments. We love engaging with you guys in the comments section. We love hearing your takes. We love, we love hearing your opinions on our takes, whether you like them or you don't. It is. Uh, we do have some laughs about some of the comments we've been getting, and that's why we are going live tomorrow as well. We want to interact with you guys. We want to see what your takes are, what you're looking for this Toronto Blue Jays season, and we just want to see how fired up you are because we are as well. Brain, you got anything else to add before we head out? No, let's go Blue Jays. We need a win. I want win day one. Let's go. Win day one and Vladdy launch. I just realized that I didn't have a yeah, launch candidate. Right. Yeah. I'm going to go with Dalton Varsho. I might as well ride it. I want to see yeah. a pull side home run. I love it. All right, guys. Thanks a bunch. We'll see you later today. Hopefully stop. You're stopping by the YouTube live. Appreciate it.